Have you ever wanted to run a website on your ham radio? Have you ever wanted to maybe serve manuals or software offline from a website that you can access from your ham radio? Probably not, but we're going to do it anyways. Welcome back to the modern ham where we are connected in new old ways. Today we are talking about the X6100. Whereas most of the modding community has turned their attention toward modifying the software or changing the operating system, I have looked internally at the operating system of the 6100 to see what kind of tools that we have on it already that we can utilize. And I came across Python. If you guys are Python developers, you know that uh, having Python on this system opens up a plethora of uh, different things that we can do with it. And I'm kind of excited because I really I haven't talked much about this radio on this channel at, at all, really. And I want to change that because there's some really cool things that this can do. So. We're going to start off by talking about hosting your own website. This may or may not have practical use, but I have found a way to kind of incorporate it by showing an example of a website running on this that actually can serve manuals and software and some different charts that you can access uh, from basically anywhere. So, and I've also already written a write-up as I usually do with these type of things on my blog, which is what we're going to be following along with. So if you guys prefer the text tutorials, you can follow along with me in the blog, in the description, open it up. You can see all the commands that I use. And uh, anyways, let's get into it. As a prerequisite to this tutorial, you will need your X6100 connected to the internet or your local network. This can be with a ethernet cable via a dongle, or you can do Wi-Fi, which is what I prefer. So we're going to go into a system setting. And then you are going to go to WLAN. So we're going to go over there, and I'm going to hit the button to get into the menu. It's going to start scanning. It selects uh, a local network. You can choose which one to modify, which one you'd like to connect to. Uh, this can be a little bit tricky over here. So over here, you'll hit Next is the button that you use to go through all of the settings, right? It's kind of strange. Oh, you just saw my Wi-Fi password. Oh, no. Um, you hit Edit to change options. So that also includes the toggle switches. So, I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty of networking, but uh, I would recommend that you put in a IP address manually and turn off DHCP. That way you know the exact IP address that your Zygu X6100 is going to be at for when we get into it. You'll know you're connected to Wi-Fi. If you go out, you should see a Wi-Fi symbol right up here on the top right corner. And that means you're connected. Again, you can also use Ethernet. All right, so now that that's finished, we don't even have to touch the 6100 anymore so long as it's powered and it's connected to the Wi-Fi. So the next thing we're going to do is connect to the uh, SSH server. So this is where you're going to need to know your IP address. If you didn't assign one statically earlier, you need to check your DHCP server or your network and find out what IP address uh, is on the 6100. You may actually be able to do that within the Wi-Fi settings. So to SSH in, you can either use PuTTY or if you're on Windows 11, you can actually use the built-in command prompt and that's what I'm going to do. So uh, if you use PuTTY, you already know how to get in there, but if you're using a command prompt, you're just going to type in SSH space root, that's the username, at, and then we're going to type in the IP address of the X6100. So that should be the IP that you either got on, that you assigned or is on DHCP. And for the password, it's going to be the default 123. And let's zoom in really good here. So you'll notice if you got in right, it should say Zygu6100. The next thing we're going to do is create the folder that's going to hold our website. So we're going to use the make dirf or directory command. And we're going to make a folder in slash temp slash website. So you're going to hit enter there. And now we are going to download the website. This is an example. Now, if you guys already have an HTML website available, feel free to use that. But following along, uh, we are going to uh, go to my GitHub page. The link will be in the description that contains the website example. Now, from here, you're going to go to code and you're going to hit download zip. And what this is going to do is just download the zip that has the website example. So once I open that up, I'm going to, I'll try to zoom in, but I'm going to open it up and I'm going to hit extract all, and I'm just going to extract that folder, and then I'm going to go into it, and then I'm going to go into it again. So you should end up with a list of files, of folders, and you should see an index.html folder, or file. 
that's how you know you're in the right folder. So this is our example website. If you guys want to see what it looks like, you just open it up where you have manuals, resources, software, and just some scrolly pictures. So that's fine and dandy if I run it on my computer, but I want to run it on the 6100, right? So going back to that folder, we have two different ways of copying these files. You can either use the built-in SCP um, or you can use a program called WinSCP. Now the difference is built-in SCP is all built into Windows now. It's in through the command prompt and it's one command. Uh, but if you're scared of the command prompt, you can use a program uh, I'll put in the description called WinSCP and it will look like this right here. And you'll put in the host name, your username, password, and um, you'll be able to transfer the file that way. Remember, we're trying to get all of those server folders and files into the slash temp slash website folder. So I'm going to use the one line SCP command that's built into Windows. Again, uh, the commands will be on my blog, but it is SCP space dash R, which is uh, for re recurse asterisk, which means everything. And then followed by the server, which is again is root at 10.10.2.75 or whatever IP address your 6100 is using. And then the path to where you want to put the files, which in our case is the slash temp slash website. Now I'm going to, it's not going to work in this command prompt because this is in the X6100. I actually want to run this from windows. So to do that, go back to where you extracted your files. To do that from windows, you want to open a command prompt inside of this folder. There's a different ways to do it. I like to right click and hit open terminal, but you may not have that option. So option two is you can go up here and click in the white space, copy all of this. And on your terminal, you can type in CD quotation marks and then paste with right click quotation marks again, enter. And that will also get you in the, so, Either way, all you need to do is just be in the folder with the extracted files. You'll know you're in the right spot if you type in DIR and it shows you at least the index.html file because then you know you're in the right spot. So you, at this point, you should have two terminals open uh, unless you're using the WinSCP, in which case you will only have the terminal open for the 6100. And I am going to go ahead and launch that command that I showed you guys right here. SCP recurse everything and then the folder path. I'm going to hit enter and it's going to ask for the password again and I'm going to hit one, two, three. Now what's happening is all of these files are now being transferred over to the 6100 inside of that temp folder. So back over on your terminal for the 6100. So back, uh, this could take a little while. The network speed on the 6100 is kind of slow. But back on the terminal, you'll want to go to, uh, on the 6100 PuTTY connection or SSH, whatever you're using, we're going to do CD for change directory, and we're going to do slash TMP slash website. And now that's going to put us right where the website lives. So you should be able to type in LS and you should see all of the website files uh, are now within the 6100. Now, the only thing we have left to do is start the web server. And this is a single Python command. So it is going to be Python dash M. Let's bring this out here. Um, HTTP dot server 80. And then I'm going to hit enter. And this is now running the web server. So what can we do? We just need to navigate to http dot dot slash slash our um, SIGU 6100's IP address. There we go. Now we're on the website and uh, you can see this is loaded. If I click on say manuals, these are some example manuals I have that are being served from the 6100. And I can open these up. Maybe I want to see the uh, Zygu G90. And so now my browser, and that was probably the largest file too, my browser is pulling that G90 manual from my 6100. It is downloading it from my 6100 and is viewing it in real time from there. I also have one for, oh yeah, here we go. Here's the 6100 manual. So now 
the manual is stored on 6100 and I'm able to actually view the files. And this might be useful if you're in the field and you start a Wi-Fi hotspot with your phone. Now you can maybe connect uh, your Zygu to your hotspot and then you can navigate to your Zygu's IP and pull all that stuff and it's all just living on the system itself. But it does go beyond that because if you get creative, here's resources. Say I wanted to see a copy of the band chart, right? So I have a copy of the band chart on here. And these will all be in the the uh, the website the uh, website example on the GitHub page, but basically you, you can kind of see where this may be useful. Now, uh, even more so than that is I have a software tab, and I didn't put anything in here because I don't want software to be on the GitHub repository. But now think, now you can have copies of software installers such as WSJTX or JSA Call or whatever other digital software that you use. You can have it actually living on the Zygu. And if you catch yourself with your radio and you don't have an internet connection or you don't have a way to download things, um, you can at least start a Wi-Fi hotspot and start pulling that software off of here that you have as a backup. Now, I don't know if there's any functional case. I don't know if anyone's actually going to use this. But I think somebody out there might see this and start getting some funny ideas. All right, so I just thought this was a really cool little project to kind of showcase just a taste of what... Uh, you can actually do with some of the built-in features of the Zygu. What I'm really hoping, though, is that somebody, like a Python developer, uh, sees this and starts getting some really cool ideas of what they can actually do with Python on the system. Because uh, as a website, honestly, there might be some use cases for it, such as serving files or a backup, but there's a lot more use cases out there. And I know you guys that are watching, some of you all are thinking about it. So if you have an idea and you don't know how to code in Python, uh, let me know below what you think would be really cool to run on the 6100 or uh, get out there and start making videos if this inspires you. Maybe there's some idea that you want or a new project. Go for it. Um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about some of the cool things that you can do with this radio. And this is one thing that came up. Appreciate you guys for watching. I'm going to do some more videos on the Zygu 60, X6100, so stay tuned for that. And you all have a good one. 73 to you.